Hallelujah. On Wednesdays, we talk about... Well, hallelujah. Amen. On Wednesdays, we talk about well-being, physical well-being, health, hygiene, and nutrition. Hallelujah. In line with that, we're continuing this week. I'm going to speak briefly on a topic I titled Cleanliness and Godliness. Amen. Please let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 23, verses 12 through 14. How many of us have heard that saying, cleanliness is next to godliness? Almost all of us have heard it at one point or the other. How many of us know that that, uh, how many of us know where it is in the Bible? Hallelujah. How many of us know where it is in the Bible? Or you have an idea, Old Testament, New Testament at least. Amen. How many of us know that it's not in the Bible? Amen. Some of those statements, like God helps those who help themselves and cleanliness is next to godliness, that some of us have been repeating since primary school, as if, no, we read it as memory verse in Sunday school. But it's not actually in the Bible, but have become such blanket statements because they really mirror the heart of God in some uh, particular scriptures. They may not be stated very expressly like that, but there are a lot of things that show that they are slight, there's some truth to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, in line with that, we're going to be looking at um, what God thinks about cleanliness. And there have been some words coming over the past few weeks in line with this. And even after this, there will still be. And I'm just praying for us that we are able to receive the word. Hallelujah. Uh, they may sound like common sense things. They may sound like things that we should already know. They may sound like... Um, things that have no point being talked about for you personally. Hallelujah. But if God is speaking about it, it's because there's someone who needs it to be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And if the word comes that applies to you, please, no matter how used you are to the opposite, or no matter how used to you are to what it is that you have been doing, you know, that mindset of this is how I've always known it to be. Please be humble enough to receive the word to be able to change. Amen. Deuteronomy 23, verses 12 through 14. It says, please, can you give me the New King James Version? It says, also, you shall have a place outside the camp where you may go out. And you shall have an implement among your equipment. And when you sit down outside, you shall dig with it and turn and cover your refuse. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this is the verse that I really want us to focus on. God is give, speaking to the Israelites and is giving them uh, commandments, you know, some extra commandments and some extra uh, instructions on how to be able to maintain his presence and some of the things that he needed to do in those days to be able to ensure that God could abide with them. And though it may be different in the fact that God always abides with us uh, irrespective of what we do or not, I want us to take a look at what, what he says here. He says, you know, before this, he's speaking to them, the first few verses we read, he says that you will have an implement so that when it is that you need to dispose of your refuse, because I expect that you know they should you should understand the need of having to dispose of refuse. Hallelujah. You would think that God would expect the Israelites to know these things. This is not something you should be speaking to Moses to come and speak to them about. You have debt. At some point, you should know when it is too much and when to get rid of it. Hallelujah. And yet it takes the time and takes space in the word to tell Moses to tell his people that I don't want to assume that you should know how it should be done. And that's the reason why we're speaking about some of the things we're speaking about this month. Because we all come from different backgrounds, we all have different understandings. Some of the things have some of these things have been emphasized for us, and some of them have not. But he's saying uh, there is a right way to do it. And the right way to do it means that first of all, if you're going to dispose of refuse, you must go outside of the camp. And if you are going to dispose of it properly, you must dig a hole 
and you must bury it properly. Amen. And then it says the reason is because for the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. It says, therefore your camp should be holy. It's not enough that you are holy. It's not enough that you are uh, living right. Your space is important to me. Your space should be a reflection of what is happening inside of you. Amen. It's not enough for me that you have kept the Ten Commandments. It's not enough for me that you are, you know, honoring your mother, mother and your father and you're not lying and all that. He says, I'm walking not just inside of you. I'm walking in your camp. Amen. So your camp is important to me. Your space is important to me. And God is saying the same thing to us today. Um, God is not just interested in your heart. We've read the scripture that says, Paul is praying. He says, I pray that not only will you prosper in your spirit, but that you would prosper in your health and in everything that has to do with you. That is God's desire for you. When Jesus came to die, his interest was not just so that you can be saved and go to heaven because you would have gone immediately after giving your life to Christ. Hallelujah. But that you could live life to the fullness of everything that he has planned for you, the fullness of everything that he has in mind for you. And part of it is learning how to really maximize God in your space. Is learning how to make your space habitable for God. Amen. I think it was Pastor Manuel that was preaching about this, how sometimes you can look so put together on the outside. And then we come inside your personal space and we can't understand what's happening. Why does it look so different? Why does the person we see in church, why does your room look very different from you? Amen. If your room is a representation of you. Why do they look like two completely different people? Amen. And I want us to, uh, I want us to understand really that the whole essence of what I'm trying to say is today is the fact that God wants us to honor him through our spaces. You know, there are some things that I always feel are basic. And so there's no reason to talk about them. But if there's anything I've learned this month, the fact that really there's no there's no point to assuming anything. And so we're going to talk about some very specific things and whether you feel like they are relevant or not, uh, those for whom it is relevant, uh, God wants them to be able to receive it. And so when we talk about your space, what are we talking about? We're talking about starting from you yourself, you as a person. And over the past few weeks, there have been things that have come along these lines in terms of, you know, learning how to keep oral hygiene. Learning how to tell whether your breath smells fine or not. Amen. Uh, how to have frequent baths. Hallelujah. Amen. If God is very particular about disposing refuse, if God is particular about keeping the camp clean, how much more particular do you think he is about keeping you yourself clean? Amen. I want us to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Please pay attention to what he says in the very first line. It says that your body, amen, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes when we read it, we, look, we read it in terms of, um, you know, you, who you are, on the inside, and why that's partially true. Look at what he expresses. He says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The body that you are seeing is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? Next verse. For you were bought at a price. It says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in, and in your spirit, which are God's. A lot of words have come about how to glorify God in your spirit. But um, what we really want to talk about is glorifying God in your body. Glorifying God in how you dress, like Pastor Emmanuel has already preached about, but glorifying God in how clean and how you are able to maintain the body that belongs to God. It says, glorify God in your body and in your spirit because they are God's. They are not your own. So when you are thinking about how frequently you ought to take a bath, understand that it's not about so much what you want or what you are used to or um, whether you feel like it's necessary or not, as it is about how you are supposed to bring glory to what belongs to God. So if bringing glory to what belongs to God means that I have to take a bath once or twice a day, depending on um, you know, how temperate the climate is, then irregardless of what I'm used to, I may be used to taking my bath once a week. Maybe that's what I'm used to. Amen. In this matter, 
what I'm used to becomes irrelevant because now we're not talking about what belongs to me. If I really understand and if I really recognize that my body belongs to God, then whatever I need to do to be able to honor God through my body, to be able to maintain the body that God has given me, I'm going to do it. Amen. It sounds like we're talking about very basic things. Hallelujah. But it's relevant for whoever it is going to be relevant for. Um, we talk about your body. We talk about your space, your room. How often do you change your sheets? How often do you wash your towel? Some of us, if I ask you the last time you washed your towel, you don't remember. Hallelujah. If we smell your towel, we're not sure if when you are, you are done taking your bath and you are wiping your body, whether you are making yourself cleaner or dirtier. Imagine you take your bath, you washed your towel, you don't know, months ago. Now you take a bath. You are cleaner. And then in the process of drying yourself, you become dirtier again. Amen. Hallelujah. There's none of us who intentionally tries to uh, undo the work that we have done. Yes or no? And yet that's what some of, the, some of us have been doing unconsciously. Um, how often do you clean your room? I've gone into some people's rooms sometimes. And, you know, one of the first things I want to say is I want us to realize that the responsibility for taking care of your space and everything that has to do with you is your responsibility. Amen. It says, therefore, glorify God in your body. You glorify God. You. Amen. It's not anybody else's responsibility. So if there's something inside you, as I'm preaching this message, that is making you feel like uh, it's all going to be solved when I get married because it's going to be the responsibility of my spouse. Or I'm waiting till I get my for to change these things. Please, I want to tell you that you already have it very wrong. Amen. God has called you to take personal responsibility for yourself. The same way you do not expect to get married and give your spouse responsibility for your spiritual life. It's the same way you do not expect to get married and give anybody responsibility for your personal space, for your hygiene. Hallelujah. Amen. Your room. Can your room look like what we see as you in church. Amen. When you take a picture and you post on WhatsApp or you post on Instagram, if we take a picture of your room and put it side by side with you, do they look alike? Some of us don't remember the last time we changed our sheets. It's a once a year thing or once in six months thing. You don't know when to tell when it's dirty or not. And I'm going to say, um, if, for example, you find that this is your problem, sometimes what might help is actually to just set a reminder. You can set a reminder, change my sheets every two weeks. Hallelujah. Or every week, or every, whatever it is, you know, that within reasonable concept that works. Hallelujah. Set a reminder. If it's not something that you are using, it's a habit you are trying to build, or something you know you need to change as a result of everything that has come this month, whatever it is. Simple things, practical things, because we're we're, the, the point of these messages that are coming this month is not just for us to be aware of what needs to be done for us, to, but for us to actually put it into action. And so if it is difficult for you, it's not something you are used to. Set a reminder until it becomes second nature. Sweep my room. Set a reminder if it's not something you remember to do. Because for some of us, because you are living in that space so much, you don't know when it has become dirty. It takes somebody coming from outside to tell you something is wrong here because you are used to it. So your judgment, you cannot depend on your judgment or trust your judgment to know when it is clean or dirty. Amen. Set a reminder to do it as often as possible. Build a routine. Hallelujah. Like any habit you are trying to build, build a routine and depend on the routine to keep you accountable. So we talked about, um, you know, your space, the things that make sense to you, your room, if you live in an apartment, and if you don't live in an apartment, the spaces you share with other people. Please, when you share space with other people, whether it's a bathroom and toilet, whether it's a kitchen, and you may, that may not apply to you right now, but it will definitely apply to you at some point. Please, um, aside from the fact that you, are, that you understand the responsibility of taking care of whatever God has committed into your hands, it's also important to recognize how to honor people by how you treat the spaces you share with them. Hallelujah. If you live with me, there are some things that... If they are not in place, just we cannot live in peace. Amen. Hallelujah. As much as possible, not, not that we cannot live in peace, but there will be unnecessary friction, unnecessary tension. 
things like when you share a bathroom and toilet, you, you see someone, you take your bath, and you know there are swords on the wall. How many of us know what soap swords are? There are swords on the wall. Those are the foam thing. And you don't know how to, when you are done, take water and rinse it from the wall. Hallelujah. If nobody has ever taught you, when you are done taking a shower, whether you share the bathroom with somebody or not, the right thing to do is take water and rinse the walls. Hallelujah. It makes it so that you don't have to wash your bathroom as often as possible. And it makes it just, it makes it look nice. It makes it look clean. It makes, it prevents it from getting dirty as quickly as possible. Hallelujah. Um, I, I say that's just an example. It's like, for example, those of us who stay in the hostel, you go to use the kitchen and somebody cannot use the kitchen after you. There are some particular people, if you see them cooking in the kitchen, if, you, if I plan to cook that day, I just cancel my plans. I'm being very sincere. There are some people, if they use the kitchen, forget about using it after them. The way they will leave the kitchen, you'll be so irritated. Learn to take care of the spaces that you share with other people. It's only right, it's only honorable, it's only respectful. That sometimes we're, we're looking far for the description of love. And sometimes love is as simple as honoring people's space, as respecting people's space, as leaving a place better than you met it because you know somebody else is going to come and use it after you. Of thinking about how you want to meet something and putting it in that state. And not waiting for somebody else to come and do it. Hallelujah. So, um, the way you are able to respect and treat with honor the things that God has committed into your hands really shows God whether you are ready to receive more. You know, I, I say often, I, I think about the fact that, you know, some, some, sometimes we're praying for God to bless us and we're praying for God to increase us and we want to own houses. But if you cannot take care of one room, what is your plan for taking care of a house with many rooms? Amen. If you don't know how to maintain a room you are sharing with somebody or a room that you, you know, own by yourself, it's just one room. What happens when God blesses you enough to move into a room with five, a, a house with five rooms? If you can't take care of one toilet and bathroom, what's going to happen when God blesses you enough to give you three? Because we think only about the blessing, but not understanding there's a responsibility to maintain the blessing. Amen. It is, God is not a God of waste. Hallelujah. And he's not a God of dishonor. He does not expect to give you something and you dishonor it in the way you treat it. Hallelujah. Or you disrespect it by the way that you treat it. So, as much as we want to be blessed, you want God to give you a car. And yet, the ability to maintain just your desk if we come to your desk, we see receipts from one year ago. Occupying space with chemistry textbook. Hallelujah. Amen. The color of the desk under every... We don't know what, what color the desk is under everything that is on it. Because the last time we saw the surface of it, we don't remember. The Bible says about the Pharisees that um, one of the reasons why he called them hypocrites is that they were so used to cleaning the outside and yet the inside was full of dirt. It is not God's desires for us to look packaged on the outside. For somebody to come and visit your room, and, um, you know, because you know somebody's coming to visit, you put it in order very quickly. You throw something behind, you put something under, you hide something behind the wardrobe, you put something under the table, just so that it can look acceptable, and then when they leave, the debt is still there. Hallelujah. Making your space habitable, showing God... Um, you honor the things that he has given you by taking care of them is the least you can do to show your appreciation for the blessing of what he has given you. Hallelujah. We may not be able to go into so much details, but I'm emphasizing so that you can go back and see what is necessary for you. For you, it might just be that you need to wash your dishes more often. Your place looks like a restaurant. Amen. You have plates and cups and cutlery, but you can never find clean ones. When you want to use this thing, you would take the one from the top and go and wash it. The rest just remain there until whenever the Spirit of God touches your heart. Especially in summer, those kinds of things. You may not really be able to appreciate it here, but 
uh, imagine back home, those kinds of, they really attract insects. They attract different kinds of things. They put you at risk for infections. And you know, you might be used to it, but what happens when you have kids? Amen. Whose immune systems are not as developed as your own? It might not affect you, but what about them? Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says about uh, a bishop, he says, whoever is going to be called to as a minister, the man who wants to be a minister, let him be somebody who first of all knows how to take care of his house before he can take care of God's house. God wants you to be able to take care of your house. Hallelujah. Of your things, of your belongings, of your possessions, of the things that he has committed into your hands. To be able to maintain your things, to treat them with respect and honor. Hallelujah. Now, uh, in all the things that we've been talking about this month, there's been, um, lastly, there's been, you know, some words about how to be able to point out some things to people that you notice. You know, and the Bible says, first of all, take the log out of your own eyes. But now I want to talk very briefly about, let's say you notice, for example, that uh, your friend's breath smells. You understand? Or... Somebody's always piling dishes up. One month, they've not washed plates. You know, and because you recognize that sometimes love is being able to have difficult conversations to make the other person better. You know, you want to speak to them about it. I just want to say very briefly that uh, it's really important how you address the conversation. In as much as we may make some jokes here and we say, you know, tell me my mouth is smelling and all that stuff. Please, the way you tell somebody something is very important. Hallelujah. Um, I'm, I'm saying that because by the end of this month, there will be some things that you are noticing in the lives of your friends. And the right thing to do is actually to draw their attention to it. Don't just turn your eye away because it's not your thing. Don't just say, you know, we all receive the word, so they, so they should receive, receive it for themselves. Hallelujah. Or, you know, the Spirit of God will minister it to them in due season. If God has put you in that person's life and you are seeing it, it means that you have a responsibility to be able to speak to the person about it. So, um, even as you go to go on to speak to people about stuff like that, please do it respectfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please do it with love. Let it be clear that the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is to make you better. It's not just because I think I'm better than you. Amen. Let your motive be clear. Uh, sometimes you can try to speak indirectly. People don't, sometimes, it's not everybody that picks indirect messages. Just because you, you, you know, you make a joke about it or this, thing, you know, you are trying to be indirect about it. And some, if the person does not pick signal, Call the person aside and speak to them. Amen. It may be uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable for you, may be uncomfortable for them, but if the end result is that the person is going to become better, then it's very much worth it. Hallelujah. But let th these kinds of conversations are conversations you have in people with private. They are not the kind of things you, you are sitting down with a group of friends and you then begin to talk about it. Serious conversation. Amen. Please, don't embarrass people like that. Call them aside. Take your time. You know, be careful about the words you use, but make sure that you pass the message across. Don't expect them to guess at what is in your mind. Don't expect them by saying something obscure. Sometimes you talk and you talk and you talk and you have talked 20 minutes, but you have not said the main thing you call the person to speak about. Don't beat around the bush so much that the person does not get the message. Be clear on what it is you actually mean to say. And pray that the Holy Spirit helps them to be able to receive it. Amen. And keep praying that even as you have spoken, that the Spirit of God is going to work with that word and help them to be able to put it into action. It does not mean that every time you see the person now, you, now, you nag them about it. Hallelujah. Like we said, we have personal responsibility for our change. But when you draw their attention to it as much as possible, um, do it in a way that's loving, do it in a way that's respectful. Do, but actually do it. Amen. As God speaks to you about the people around you, as God speaks to you about yourself, even as you put, receive grace to put the word into action, speak to people about the same. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to just bow our heads. We're just going to pray um, for the grace to be able to receive every word that's coming, to be able to apply the word. That even as God is speaking and has spoken to you about the things that you need to apply for yourself personally, that um, you're going to receive grace to put it into action, not just to hear it, but actually do, to take personal responsibility, to understand that it is my responsibility, and to be able to minister in love to the people around you in the same. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What do we say to Pastor Phoebe? What kind of love is there? God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. At the beginning of the month, God said it's a month of love and respect. 
And um, everything we're talking about is one that's so crucial and so connected. Um, that even if when it seems like we're talking about well-being, it's still actually because of love. Amen? And it is also um, in respect to your God, to yourself, and to your neighbor. Amen? It's disrespectful, obviously, to, to smell so bad. And it's difficult for your neighbor to breathe. Amen. A choke in the person. Hallelujah. Um, it's not love also. And um, true love, like we often say, is not selfish. And you know real or fake love every time when you see traces or forms of selfishness. So as discomforting as it may be to do some of the things which Pastor Phoebe just spoke about, um, for example, why should you spend another 30 seconds just wiping the walls? Because you really love. Amen. Um, some people will say, it's, it's, it's not my business. Let the person who bath after me. Come do it. Again, it shows selfish love. It's irresponsible and it's careless. Praise the Lord. So as we grow in love, we become more responsible, not just for ourselves, we become responsible for other people. Um, it's the same thing that makes um, you call some other person to attention. Uh, if, let's say, your blockmate is misbehaving in that regard. Like I often will say many times, you are the best person. There's a reason why God brings people your way, so that you can impact them. So you can see that thing before another person sees it. So you can cover them. To address the issues in private. So, um, if someone every time they use the toilet after they defecate, the place smells or the place is stained with traces of feces, and uh, not that there isn't a brush by the side, but you just have noticed it was not a one time incident. It's not as if the person was rushing to class, even if you are rushing to class, you can still do something about that. But you see it again and again and again. Don't just ignore it. And it is not law for you every time to be doing it for the person. It's not because you cannot do it. You call the person's attention to it. Because if you, the person don't learn from it now, tomorrow that same issue, that same issue may be what will ruin his or her home. As simple and as small as it is. So love goes beyond us. It's not about you anymore. Love begins to think and concern about its name. So it's not because I cannot put up with a messed up toilet. It's because the man coming, the woman coming, may not be able to. Am I speaking to somebody? So that's why we do what we do, and it's the reason why we teach what we teach. And um, some of these topics, we could easily just brush them to the side, but because of sincere love and interest in each and every one of you, that's why we keep on bringing good content. Praise the Lord. How many are liking the content so far? I like our presentation. God bless you. To help us again today, to take us um, beyond um, what Pastor Phoebe has already done. We have another person who's going to speak to us again today, just like last week, um, to show us another side, an extra side, um, not the usual side. Amen. Please allow me, uh, as I welcome to stage, our uh, wonderful daughter, uh, Minister. Stephanie, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity to speak to us. Amen. Um, I want to use this opportunity to also um, thank all the pastors in the house and across the cities. Amen. Um, can you look at your neighbor and ask, are you taking care of your body? What was the response? <laughs> Are they taking care of their bodies? Amen. Um, God wants us to take care of our bodies. It's our responsibility. Amen. God will not come down from heaven to do it for you. God wants us to be intentional about everything that we do. The things that we eat. The things that we drink. It's very important because it's would definitely show in your body. Amen. 
um, I want to talk on what I title uh, building a healthy relationship with food. Amen. Uh, I chose this topic because I believe it's the foundation. Amen. If you would want to start eating healthy, if you would want to build healthy eating patterns, you first of all would want to um, understand how your body works. You want to understand how you relate with food because you can't just get up and start, you know, dieting or without even understanding what it's about. Amen. And my aim is that at the end of the day, we would learn how to practice mindful eating. Amen. And that um, will change our mindset concerning food, how we eat, everything surrounding food. And also, I want us to learn how to connect to our bodies. Amen. Because sometimes it's, it's so evident that the way we eat, it, 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 it shows that sometimes... It shows that we've detached from our bodies. Amen. We can't even tell when we are full, when we eat and we are full. We can't even tell. There's this connection with the body that you're supposed to have. Amen. And I also want us to, at the end of the day, learn um, new habits. Amen. Habits that has um, long-term results. Amen. So I'm going to be talking on three main things. I want to talk on, firstly, I want to talk on... Um, how mindsets affect the way we eat. Amen. Are you aware that mindset affects how you eat? There's a way, there's a way you think, there's a way you think about food, there's a way you perceive food that shows in how you eat, actually. If you see food to be a source of entertainment, there's a way you are going to eat. Amen. If you see food to be medicine, this is the way you are going to eat. Amen. I see a lot of people like um, jumping on different dieting trends that come up, you know. Okay, you ask somebody, okay, I'm dieting. Why are you dieting? You don't even know why you're dieting because you've heard that we are supposed to diet. You're supposed to eat healthy, live healthy. So you start dieting without, first of all, understanding what it's about. Amen. Before I um, continue talking about the mindset, I want to say this, that dieting is usually temporary. Amen. Usually when people diet, after reaching their goals, they stop and then go back to their old ways. And if you are dieting to lose weight, you end up gaining the weight back. So what I want you to do is to build... Um, habits, a proper routine that will last for a long time. Amen. I just want to say this. Um, I talked about mindful eating, right? Um, when, when I was a, teen, a teenager, in my early teenage years, um, I lost like 23 pounds. And I didn't diet per se. I didn't undergo any strict diet. What I did was, I was mindful of the way I was eating. I, of course, there was intermittent fasting and some physical activity, but mainly I was mindful about what I was eating. So is it possible to lose weight, for those, for those of you who want to lose weight, is it possible to lose weight dieting? Yes. Is it possible to lose weight while practicing mindful eating? Yes, it's very much possible. You don't have to necessarily undergo a strict dieting to lose weight. Amen. So now back to the um, how mindset affects our eating. Um, I want to um, talk about um, four principles, four principles that will help us to change our mindset about food. Amen. These principles will help to reshape our mindset, how we understand food, how we see food. Amen. So the first principle, we are very familiar with it. We all know it. We see it everywhere in books. We hear it all around. But it sounds like a cliche because it's like we are used to hearing it. Amen. And the first one is you are what you eat. So... Um, 
when I say you are what you eat, it's not just about, you might think about, okay, when you eat um, unhealthy food, you gain weight. You might think about weight, but that is also part. But I want to talk about um, the aspects where you are what you eat in the sense that whatever you eat shows in your mood, in your feelings, in your emotions. Amen. Have you ever, I don't know if it, it happens to some of you, but I'm very sure it does. If you eat junk food continuously, sometimes you feel nauseous, you feel bloated, you feel like you are sick. You don't feel healthy inside. So it's a way of the body trying to communicate to us that this thing is not going down with me well. I don't like it. But usually we don't listen to the body. In the beginning I said I want us to connect to our bodies. That's my aim. I want us to connect to the body because the body is trying to speak. But usually we don't really listen to it. We eat anything that we want. Whether I feel nauseous or not, okay, we sleep. The next day we move. You know, but the body is trying to communicate. It's telling us something. Amen. Amen. Are we writing it down? You are what you eat. It's definitely going to show in your body. It's, go it's going to show in how you feel. If you eat healthy, you will definitely have a healthy weight. If you eat food with um, empty calories, food without um, nutritional value, it's definitely going to show in your weight. It will show on you. We will see it. Say, you, say we will see it. We are going to see it on you. Amen. The next one is um, you eat to live, not live to eat. You eat to live, not live to eat. When you say um, you, you eat to live, it means that you have your health in mind when you are eating. Amen. Anytime you eat, you should have your health in mind. You're not just eating anything. For example, you come back from class, come back from work, but we are used to class. So you come back from class and you open the fridge and let's say there is small rice, okay, half chicken, maybe dash of stew and you have soda or juice in the fridge. Then you have maybe donuts and some biscuits, you know, chocolate biscuits. Then, because the rice is small, okay, it's not going to fill you up. You bring everything, you assemble them on the table then, okay. Because you want to be full, right? You have to eat. You need to come to church, right? I'm sure some of you did it. <laughs> so, um, we assemble the food and then we try to eat. We start with the rice. When we finish go to the donuts, the biscuits, with the juice or the soda, and you're full, you're like, yeah. <laughs> Amen. We are full, we are ready for the day, right? But guess what? <laughs> I want you to know that when you do that, right? <laughs> I want you to know that when you do that, you are actually just trying to survive. You're trying to survive for the next minute. Sharp, sharp, you know, you're trying to survive. But the thing is that um, wellness, right? Wellness sees to it that you don't only survive. That you're not only surviving, but you're thriving as well. So that's why we don't have to just eat anything just to fill up our stomach and then I'm ready to go. No. We eat to live, and not just to live, but to, uh, to live well. Amen. Are we taking note? Um, the next point is, the next principle is, food must be enjoyable. Amen. I know you like that. Food must be enjoyable. Please go with me to Genesis 1 verse 29 to 30. Genesis. I want the amplified version, please. Amen. So God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed. That is on the surface of the entire earth. And every tree which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. 30. And to all the animals on the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that moves on the ground, to everything in which there is the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. 
because he commanded it. Amen. It's obvious God created food for us, for our nourishment. Amen. He created food so that we can enjoy, we can eat and have satisfaction. So don't feel bad when you are eating for satisfaction. Amen. It's scriptural. We're supposed to enjoy food. Whenever we think of healthy eating, the first thing that comes into your head is grass, grass, grass. But that is not true. Amen. It's not true. Or the first thing that comes into your head is like maybe eating bland meals, you know, meals without taste and trying to eat grass, you know. It's not so interesting now. God wants us to enjoy food. Amen. And um, I want us to know that healthy, healthy eating is actually a balance of health and pleasure. Amen. I spoke about um, eating to live. Okay, that's the health part, the health aspect of healthy eating. And there's a pleasure aspect too. So if this is health, if this is pleasure, we cannot just take the health aspect and just only see food as medicine, okay? And or maybe take the pleasure aspect and only see food as entertainment or enjoyment. They come together, okay? Amen. And the last principle is um, eating healthy is the norm. Eating healthy is the norm. Every normal person, every normal human being is supposed to eat healthy. That is the normal way. Eating healthy is not the same as dieting. Amen. Every normal person is supposed to eat healthy. If you are not eating healthy, you are not doing the normal thing. So I want you to bear in mind that eating healthy is the norm. Amen. So I want you to break free from all that dieting mentality, you know. It keeps you in one place. We are supposed to enjoy food all around. Amen. Now, um, I want to talk about um, factors influencing eating behavior. Amen. Factors influencing eating behavior. I want to ask a question. Um, I don't know if somebody's going to answer me, but what caused you to eat before coming to church? <laughs> what did you say? Hunger. Okay. Are you sure it was hunger? Or what's going to cause you to eat when you go home? Hunger. Are you sure it's hunger? <laughs> Um, please um, take me to the book of First Corinthians six, verse twelve. Don't forget your answer. You said hunger, right? First Corinthians six, verse twelve. Um, yeah, amplify. Thank you. The Bible says everything is permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. And brought under its power, allowing it to control me. I want us to put... Okay, please give me the NIV version. I have the right to do everything, anything you say. But not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything. But I will not be mastered by anything. So, I want us to put um, it in place of do. Amen. So let's do this. I have the right to eat anything you say, but not everything, not everything is beneficial or not every food is beneficial. I have the right to eat anything, but I will not be mastered by any food. Amen. Let's go back to the Amplified. Sorry, I want to see something. Every food is permissible for me, but not all foods are beneficial. Amen. Every food is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by every food or brought under its power, allowing it to control me. Amen. Is God speaking to somebody? Amen. You have the right to eat anything that you want, obviously. You can eat anything that you want, but God is saying that this, not all foods are beneficial. Here I see God speaking about balance, speaking about self-control. Amen. Technically, um, 
hunger and satiety, right? It's supposed to be the key regulators of how we eat. When you are hungry, you eat, definitely. When you are full, you what? You stop. But there are other factors, amen. Somebody say factors. There are other factors that control our eating behavior. These factors are undercover. They are hiding under hunger, right? And they are controlling your eating behavior. You might think it's because you are hungry. But it's not because you are hungry. Sometimes it's because of hunger. But other times it's because of these factors. So I want us to take a look at them. So the first one, I want, to, I want us to look at social eating. There's something called social eating. Amen. You know when you go for a gathering or there's an event, right? And they offer you food. And maybe you are not really hungry, then you went for the gathering. And because they offered you food, you ate it. You were not hungry. You ate it, right? And you became so full. Was it because you were hungry? No, but you still ate, right? So it wasn't because of hunger. It was because you were offered food or because you were around people that were eating. So I want us to know that it's not only hunger that causes us to eat. Sometimes it's because you're around people that are eating. Amen. And the next one is social eating. Social eating. I want you to really pull them down. Social eating. Sorry, situational eating. My mistake. Situational eating. This is when, um, for example, you, you are passing by an eatery or like a bakery and then you smell the food and you're like, you know, the food is communicating to your senses like, God, I want this. So, or maybe shawarma joints because we are used to that. You know how shawarma has this nice smell. So you're passing by that joint and then you smell the food and because like the situation has presented itself or there's an opportunity to eat, you know, or sometimes maybe some of us do this a lot, you know, when we are watching movie, you put off the light, the room is dark, you know, and the atmosphere is conducive for what's eating. So we just pick some snacks and then we eat. Were you hungry? You were not hungry, but you ended up what? Eating. The next one is emotional eating. <laughs> Emotional eating. Now, emotional eating is when you eat because of how you're feeling. People eat because they are bored. There's nothing to do. I, just, I feel bored. So food is going to entertain me at this moment. People eat because they are anxious or they are sad. They are depressed. You know... You feel down. You came back from school. Teacher gave you bad math. You are down. You just need something to lift up your mood. So you just open the fridge. You just eat anything that you find in there. We tend to use food as an escape, like a coping mechanism to comfort us when you are feeling down. And the last one is availability. People tend to eat because there's food available. Maybe you've, you've been... <laughs> I want to say this, but maybe you've 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 been in Safa for a long time, eh? And <laughs> there's no food, okay? But the moment you got an alert, like you just went for shopping, and there's a lot of food around. So when you look to your left, to your right, front, but there's food, like you want to eat as if there's no tomorrow, because well, the food is available, and not because you're actually hungry. Sometimes you you just finished eating. But there's food. Like, <laughs> amen. There is food. So you have to eat it. Amen. I want us to know that all these factors, they are not ideal. Okay. They are not ideal reasons why you should eat. These factors make you overeat. And then when, I'm, when I was speaking, I said, I want us to build a what? Healthy relationship with food. Overeating is not healthy. Amen. 
you are, you are not hungry, but you are eating because you are feeling bored, because you are sad or something. Amen. I would like to speak on how to start eating healthy. Do you want to start eating healthy? It's very hard. <laughs> A lot of us want to eat healthy, but it's one thing to start, and it's another thing to also start well. Most of us want to start eating healthy, but we don't know how to do it. Can you please um, take me to the book of Proverbs? Proverbs 25, verse 16, NLT version. Amen. The Bible says, do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it will make you sick. This is in the Bible. Amen. Please give me the NKGV. NKGV version, yeah. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Also give me the message. Translation. Thank you. When you are given a box of candy, don't gulp it all down. Eat too much chocolate and you will make yourself sick. Amen. Are we seeing it in the word of God? If you don't eat healthy, it's definitely going to show in your body. You are going to fall sick. Amen. You're going to either put on weight or it's going to show in your mood. Amen. In how you feel. Amen. Um, the first thing I want to say is concerning... Um, Eating healthy is make smart food choices. Amen. If you want to start eating healthy, you would want to make smart food choices. Amen. What do I mean when I say make smart food choices? You know, there are different food nutrients, food groups available, right? And then it's recommended that we eat a healthy, a balanced diet. Balanced diets consist of all these nutrients coming together. You have to eat from each of these food nutrients. We have the carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, calcium. So all these come together to make a balanced diet. But making smart choices is when you go to each of these nutrients or food groups and then look for the one that, is, that has... Um, more nutrients, that is nutrients dense to keep your body healthy. Amen. You don't just eat anything because it's carbs. Okay. Balanced diet. You just pick carbs, proteins, fats, and oils, and just add it and then you go. No. You have to make smart choices. Amen. Um, you have to try to make sure that whatever you're eating is um, nutrients dense, amen. So far as you are, you are um, keeping um, your calories under check, amen. There's this app I want to show you. Um, it's, it's actually a website. Um, it's called www.calculator.net. You can use it to calculate your the your calorie requirements. Okay. So if you want to know, for example, you hear. I know you've you've heard this before. 2,000 calorie diets, 1,600, 1,800 calorie diets is the amount of calories you need every single day. So if you want to calculate and know the amount of calories you need to eat every single day, you can go to www.calculator.net and go to the fitness, um, the fitness sector. You can see um, that area and then you just insert your, I think you insert your, your age, your, your height, your weight, and then I think um, your activity. And it will tell you how many calories you're supposed to eat. Amen. So um, in, in making smart food choices, you, you have to eat carbohydrates, okay? Carbohydrates. Um, people say carb carbs are bad, but it's not all carbs that are bad. Amen. When you're eating carbohydrates, you want to choose... Um, fruits and vegetables, they are very good sources of carbohydrates. You want to eat varieties of fruits, you want to eat varieties of vegetables, 
um, green leafy vegetables like broccoli. I hope you're writing them down. Broccoli, um, kale, we have lettuce. These are all good sources. And colored vegetables, we have carrots, bell peppers, a lot of them. And then also choose um, whole grains, whole grains. Like we have wheat, we have um, oatmeal, we have um, buckwheat, we have um, we have brown rice, we have barley, millets. We also have whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta. You can eat white bread, okay? But the reason why we go for um, whole wheat bread is because it contains more nutrients. It's nutrient packed, and it has a lot of fiber. So the thing is. Um, you will eat a little and you feel full. It has low calories. So you eat a little and you feel full. And at the end of the day, without a lot of calories. So that's why we recommend that you eat food that contains whole grains. Amen. We are still in church. Amen. Um, when it comes to proteins, you, you would want to go for poultry. Chicken, turkey, lean meats. Lean meats, I mean meats without a lot of fat. You want to go for um, nuts. You want to go for beans. We have lentils. You know, seeds. These are all good sources of proteins. Amen. We have peas as well. Amen. And when it comes to fat, you try to limit the saturated fat and um, trans fats that are found usually in like the fries and all the junk foods that are around. So you want to limit it and then eat more of the unsaturated fat. Now we can find in some of the vegetable oils. We have like um, olive oil. We have canola. We have um, sunflower oil, very good sources of oil, fat. And then we, oh yeah, we can also see them in um, seeds. Some seeds also have, have very good sources of um fat amen and fish is also a very very good source of fat amen also don't forget your avocados they have very good sources of fat very very good source of fat amen so the, the whole idea is to go around these food groups and pick the ones that are nutritious okay you can still eat the things that you enjoy but the thing is there are some foods that are supposed to be eaten a lot there are some that are supposed to be eaten in minute quantities. And there are others that they're supposed to be eaten occasionally, not every time. So it's not about restricting yourself to a particular food or being on a diet. That's not what healthy eating is about. It's about taking advantage of the, the foods, the, the nutrient-rich foods in all these um, food groups. Amen? So, for example, um, if you like taking swallow, how many of you like taking swallow? If you like taking swallow, um, let's say manka, right? You would want to go for, or let's say fufu, yeah? You want to go for a healthier alternative, okay? Like, for example, you can use oatmeal. It's very nice. I tried it myself, and I think I prefer this to the others. It's really nice, and it's very nutritious, trust me. So you can go in for, try using oatmeal, oat flour for fufu. It doesn't mean you can't eat your fufu. You can eat them, but in moderation, amen? You can eat them in moderation. But try to look for alternative versions of it, okay? The idea is to stay healthy. The idea is to eat in moderation and balance it up, amen? Now, um... The second point is um, start slowly. Start slowly. We are talking about how to start eating healthy. We said make smart choices. Make smart food choices. The second one is um, start slowly. Take small steps. You don't just want to start by making strict rules for yourself. You know, you just start and then, for example, you are used to eating beggar, fries, you know, manka and all that, then all of a sudden you just want to be eating salad and drinking water. I tell you, you would stop along the way. You will stop because you're not, you're not happy. You don't even understand what you're doing. 
you want to take them step by step. So for example, you like taking juice, saduchok, sandora, or soda. There's nothing wrong with that, just that it has a lot of sugar. So if you'd want to start eating healthy, what you want to do is probably, if you take like 400 milliliters every day, you want to reduce that. You want to take like around maybe 200 or 100 and try to dilute it with water. I know that one sounds a bit, <laughs> you don't want to believe that, but that is, that is how you start. You can't just start by drinking water every day. Yeah, you're definitely going to cheat. You're definitely going to cheat. You would want to drink juice. There will be days that you want to drink juice. So try to dilute your juice or try to dilute your soda. Amen. So that's how to take small steps. Personally, I, when, I, when, I, when I started eating healthy, what I did was I didn't just start eating salad and all that. What I did was I, first of all, started by reducing the amount of sugar that I put in my food. So if you are used to putting, let's say, five cubes, you want to reduce it to what? Two. And get, let your body get used to the process because you are changing. There's, there's a change going on. So you want your body to get used to it. So you try, first of all, put two. You are not rushing anyway. We are trying to build a, a, a healthy lifestyle for a lifetime. So you first of all put, try to put two, and when, or when it's salt, you try to reduce it step by step. Then you are moving step by step. Then you are moving. You are climbing. Amen. And the last one, the last point is um, focus on consistency. Amen. Focus on consistency. Usually we are focused on the results, especially those that want to lose weight. We are so much focused when we, when we start eating healthy, okay? I want to lose weight. We just climb on the, the what's it called? The, the scale. After like two days, you just want to lose weight. But it doesn't work that way, amen? When you start eating healthy, you want to focus on the steps that you are taking each day, those small, small steps that you take that makes that difference, amen? You keep doing it and then allow your body to embrace that change. Allow your body to embrace that whole procedure and then definitely at the end of the day, you are going to see the result. So you don't want to rush through it. You want to take them step by step and then build consistency. Be consistent every single day. You used to eat... Um, for example, if you are used to eating five loaves, sorry, a loaf of bread, you want to reduce it to half, okay? You can't, you can't just expect somebody that's used to, used to eating um, a loaf of bread every day to all of a sudden start eating one. The person is going to feel sick. There's something about when you, when you, when you jump on, on, on a diet or when you want to eat healthy and you jump on it all at once, you feel, you don't really feel good. I don't know if that's happening to somebody, but you don't really feel good. You want your body to be used to it. So you want to take it step by step. So these are practical ways on how to start eating healthy. First of all, you have to make smart food choices. Then you take them step by step and you try to be consistent. And at the end of the day, you're going to see your result. Amen. So I would end here. I hope we learned a thing or two. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together for one more time. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Um, quickly, just before we wrap up, um, just the topic alone um, speaks volumes. Amen. I love the topic. It um, speaks of relationships. Tell me relationships relationship building a healthy relationship with food hallelujah building a healthy relationship with food um hopefully by the grace of god maybe this year or maybe sometime next year um we'll look at um <coughs> a very crucial topic amen 
um, in the church, um, we're so busy addressing certain things, dealing with um, setting um, common, that's the word, setting common demons and issues that we, as a result, we're never able to look at some others that are sneaky in the church. Um, we ask for deliverances many times in church. We, when we pray, uh, we like warfares. We like to deal with certain kinds of demons, demons of lust, for example, uh, demons of, um, so that demon is there common in the church. Uh, a lot of demons we don't want around church at all. Um, and there are some spirits that we ignore that is very common in church that even uh, if you tell people they would never ask for forgiveness about, uh, they would hardly ever even know that there's anything wrong. Um, that's one of such spirits which is very common in the church is uh, the spirit of abuse. 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 And um, that's what I was uh, referring to when I said, hopefully, maybe during this year or maybe next year, um, we'll be able to really go exhaustively in it because uh, many times it's unconscious to many of God's people. We abuse things. We abuse people. We abuse relationships. We abuse opportunities. We abuse access. We abuse places. And here... We abuse food. Food. So I love the approach it comes from, which is the fact that it's a relationship too. The same way um, people abuse themselves in a relationship or abuse um, someone with whom they're in a relationship with. There's a tendency to abuse the food with, whom, with which you're supposed to have a healthy, good, godly relationship. Amen. Um, I love the fact that she spoke on food. Last week also, the, the, the other minister spoke also on um, nutrition. Surprisingly, very crucial things. Amen. Um, that we many times ignore. We forget that the whole world is where it is today. What we call the first sin because of food. Amen. So food is a very crucial part of our salvation process. And the earlier the church will begin to understand it, the better. And that's why I say that uh, it's very easy for us to focus on some other kinds of demons and ignore something as simple as, how do you treat the food that God brings your way? Amen. Do you molest it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you take advantage of it? Amen. Can food live with you in the same house and be sure that it would reach the next morning? Amen. Do you rip the food? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does any food go or are you selective? How do you like your food? You see now. So I love the topic. Uh, um, having a healthy relationship with food. Because food is to be related with. So anyway, today is not on, on, on that, um, on abuse. Um, but I want to share one scripture with you quickly. One, just one scripture. Just one scripture. Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. And the 17th verse. And we'll conclude. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 17. If you have um, amplified, it will be nice. Hmm. I see amplified has been amplified for me. Huh? This is more, perhaps more recent amplified. He says, blessed, prosperous, and admired. Amen. Are you, O land, when your king is a man of noble birth? Amen. Mine says happy, um, fortunate, and to be envied. And it's also amplified. Amen. All amplified are not equal. Amen. Are you, O land, when your king is a man of noble birth, and your princes and officials feast at the proper time for strength and not for what? Drunkenness. So she began to ask a question, why do you eat? Um, the word of God is very clear. When you go to King James, um, there should be the right reasons you eat. Amen. You don't eat because food is available. You don't eat what? That's an, many times it's abuse. It says, blessed are you, O land, 
when your king is the son of nobles. Another translation says when you are when your king is mature. When he's mature, and your princes eat in due season at the right time. You eat for strength and not for drunkenness. You don't eat because you are hungry. You don't eat because um of, of course she listed several of those points. The right reason you should eat is for strength. Amen. For strength. And that's why every food ends up being translated, or you heard her speak about calories. Calories one of the units or the units for um, energy measurements. Some other places you see it in kilojoules. And that's why a topic as um, is very crucial, calorie counting. Calorie counting. It remains the biggest issue with many people. Because they don't understand it. Uh, they're not so interested. Or it seems too complicated. I hope maybe before the end of the month it shall be properly explained. Um, you should eat for strength, for calories. Amen. I'm asking you somebody. For energy. Not for drunkenness. Not so that I can, you know, be full. Not so that I can feel it. We know for the right amount of strength that I need to do what I need to do. Are you getting me? So unless you plan to be walking the whole day from Pasishna to uh, Metro, there are certain foods you do not qualify to eat. Especially now that you are doing, you are working online, um, working and studying online. Uh, most of you, you are almost always in the same place. Your food should be like this. Amen. Your food should be like this. Amen. Because again, now tomorrow we'll begin to pray to God for healing and miracle and call the God or the calorie burning God. Amen. <laughs> it's also the calorie stopping God. Amen. I'm asking you somebody. It gives you wisdom before time to do something so that you don't even need to get there. Are you with me? A lot has been said. Um, again, out of love and respect, okay? It's a month of love and respect. It is disrespectful. It's unnice and it's unloving when someone takes his time or her time to try to impact knowledge and you don't take it. Am I speaking to somebody? There's nothing more disrespectful than that. So I say that to say because now, all this month, different preachers have been coming. They are saying something to you. Don't abuse the relationship of having someone who can talk to you. Hear them. They are not talking for themselves. They are talking to impact and to open your eyes to something you never knew about. For your own health and for your well-being. For your children and for your children's children. I'm asking to someone. Praise the Lord. So he said, please, please go home. If you did not get all the points, if you did not understand them, Ask questions, like I said the last time. You can ask her for clarifications. Um, you can ask any of the ministers. It's on that note, I'd like us to be on our feet. We're just going to thank God for, for his wisdom. Mm -hmm.